Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, trustees, President Khoury, friends, distinguished guests, and most importantly, the class of 2024. I wish to thank you for granting me this huge honor. For me, the 10 years that I'd spent here were the most enriching part of my career. And for me, the friendships that I made in this institution have remained the most enduring. But more importantly, what very few people do know is that in 1948, when the Nakba took place, of the 70 Palestinian doctors working in Palestine, two-thirds of them had graduated from this institution. And therefore, <laughs> it remains an important part of the history of Palestinian medicine for us to be here at the American University at the time of the second rupture and the second erasure to reaffirm our commitment to fight off this genocide. <laughs> 45 years ago, the ever-present Audrey Lords warned us, and I quote, the master's tools will never bring down the master's house. And it is as fitting a caution now in 2024, in the midst of this 21st century's first genocidal war as it was when it was first made the difference is that today, as I look towards you, the, the class of 2024, I see the very tools that we must be making. These are the tools that will make our own future, a future that is the answer to our dreams and aspirations, a future that heals the suffering and sacrifices of today and reflects our own cultural and historic past and our future challenges. Over the last seven months, we have been asking ourselves the question, why do all the international agencies, whether it is the World Health Organization or the International Committee of the Red Cross or Doctors Without Borders or any other organization fail us, whether in Palestine, Syria, Sudan, or anywhere else where our people need them the most? But the real question that we should be asking is, why, do not, why don't we have an Arab health organization or an Arab committee for the Red Crescent and Red Cross or Arab doctors without borders? Why don't we have our own tools and our own organizations that can respond to our own needs and set our own agendas? I, like many in this university, is the, are the son of a Nakba survivor. And like the majority of his generation, my father believed that education was the only chance to prevent erasure. And that was, it was the only mean for our people to maintain their dignity and continue to the future. His generation, who had watched everything their families had, both material and social, taken away from them, believed obsessively that the only thing that no one can ever take away is your education. <clears throat> Other than that, you can be dispossessed of your money, your land, and even your social status. And I firmly believe that it was that spirit of that Nakba generation that saved our people. We have sadly learned a lot about genocides from this current genocide. And one of the most important things we have learned is that in order to eliminate a people, you must destroy their universities. And as we watched 12 of Gaza's universities being destroyed, we understood the importance of universities as the pivot from which we move from the present to the future. And therefore, we have to reaffirm our dedication to defend our universities at all costs. 
and rebuild those that are destroyed in Gaza. On a personal note, I need to dedicate this award, as I do to all awards, to my colleagues and comrades in Gaza. To those heroes that I've reinvented and reaffirmed the meaning of medical dedication to the doctors who are still in northern Gaza at this moment, to my friend Dr. Muhammad Abed, Dr. Marwan Abu Saada, and to scores of others who continue to work in Gaza's hospitals, particularly in the north, and also to the glorious memory of our fallen comrades, to Dr. Ahmed Maqadmi, to Dr. Adnan al Bursh, and to Dr. Hani Abu, Haytham Abu Hani, whose memory will always be in our minds and for whom we affirm that we will continue the struggle. Thank you very much for your kindness. Thank you very much for this award.